Now you folks know I'm just an old country bumpkin from Texas, right? I don't get to hang out in, in fancy circles much, you know, uh, with the ultimate of luxury or anything like that. But every now and then, every now and then I get to visit one of those really nice places. And I was contacted by Christian Blessing. Now it's probably actually pronounced Christian, but uh, Christian said, hey, we've got this scent called gravel, which you've probably heard of if you know anything about men's fragrances. And I've been learning about it. And he said, we're coming out with a new shaving soap called Gravel Shaving Soap. So this was sent to me. Look at this box. This is a very fancy box. I like being able to visit these. It's like visiting a really nice, beautiful old hotel. You know, I can't afford to live there all the time. But if somebody gives me a, a comp tonight, heck yeah, I'm going to try it out. And I'm going to tell you about it. Let's try it out because they're just now launching this. The company has been reborn from the ashes of a gentleman named Michael Knudsen who came up with this in the 50s. He emigrated to the U.S., to New York in the 50s and came up with the gravel men's cologne. We'll talk about that as we shave. But let's, I took a shower, I did my hair. I'm going to shave with, because we're getting fancy today. We're getting a 1958 executive gold fat boy here. So this was around when gravel was around. Here's the actual cologne itself. We'll talk about that in a minute as well. And what my favorite two colognes are, because he sent me some samples. And we're going to lather up with uh, just this brush here, the old Phoenix Artisan Accoutrement. It's the 70s Harvest Gold looking one. I love it. And uh, we'll open this thing up and we'll lather up and we'll talk about it. Okay, so Michael Knudsen was a fragrance guy. <laughs> Beautifully put. I'm, I'm sure that they're happy they sent me this. I, I can speak so eloquently. Uh, I'm like Orson Welles or, uh, you know, one of those guys. Uh, but anyway, so Michael Knudsen came up with Gravel, a man's cologne in 1957. And it was one of the, it's the, now the oldest fragrance, men's fragrance in the U.S. And uh, so Michael Knudsen, owned and ran his company until he was 98 and he passed away. And then this father and son, Georg and Christian, or George and Christian, as I will Americanize their names, Blessing, their last name is Blessing. They said, this is, we've got to revitalize this. And that's what they're doing. So let's open this thing up and shave with it. It's got the outer sleeve and the inner sleeve. This is like a gift box if you went to like, like normally I shop at Target, right? You'd have to go to some place like Neiman Marcus to get this, you know. Not even Macy's is going to have this. You're going to have to go real fancy. <laughs> or what's the new one? Nordstrom's. That's the new one, right? So anyway, here's the inner box. Put the sleeve over there. And then there's a little story if you want to read that. You can pause that. I don't know if you can see it or not or if it's backwards. But here is the shaving soap. And it's got the little, like a satin ribbon that you pull. And here's what's inside. Let's pull it together, shall we? I put my thumb on it so it didn't fall out. There we go. There's the shaving soap. It is in a stainless steel bowl. There you go. So that's cool. You know, I get this, this, the feeling that people are trying to make me use shaving bowls now. This is the second one I've been sent. They don't want to see me face lather anymore. Here it is. Gravel shaving soap. New York, 1957. It's 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. This is a reusable bowl. This is the puck inside. I took, I took the liberty of taking it out of its plastic. So there you go. When you're done with this, you can continue to use your, your little shaving bowl with a lid on it. So that's cool. Stainless steel. Now, I want to tell you about the scents as we lather this thing up because I wrote them all down. Here, they sent me this and uh, Christian sent me a thank you. So these are my notes. <laughs> so thank you again, Christian. Or Christian. I'm just going to say Christian. Because I'm just a country bumpkin from Texas. Not really, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, how do you like that stash? It's coming in. Coming in. It's going to be gone at the end of this month, so don't worry. All right, put some hot water on my face. I'm going to grab my brush that's been sitting in the water, even though it's synthetic. You don't need to make it, uh, you know, steep or anything. And we're going to just lather up in the bowl here. Now, the scents. Here are the scent notes of this. And there are a bunch, but I wrote them all down. Normally, I would just say a couple, but ooh, this is lathering beautifully. Woo! I like it when it's effortless, and this is effortless so far. This smells like a classic, just, it's, it's the kind of thing where it just smells classic, you know what I mean? It smells from the era, it smells vintage, I don't know. 
I don't know. Here are the, the notes as I lather up. They are Pettigrain, which is a bitter orange. I'd never heard of that before. Pettigrain, orange. Oh, maybe it's Pettigrain orange. <laughs> Rosemary, bergamot, lemon, cedarwood, sandalwood, geranium, iris, cloves, cloves, rose, clove, cinnamon, leather, musk, and finally, my favorite, castorium. Do you know what castorium is? Neither did I. Then I looked it up. It's from the castor gland of beavers. You got some beaver oil in here. Yes, there we go. But all together, it makes... The scent of this, I can tell, is high-end. There's just something about a cologne. Like, say as opposed to something like Dracar Noir or uh, Polo or... You know, any, any modern, you know, kind of, when you get a hold of a real men's cologne or women's perfume that's like really like $150 up, you can tell that they're made of things that you haven't smelled before. That's what I get out of this. This smells classic and cool, and it went on very well. It's very creamy so far. Let's see how slick it is. Now we're not going to shave the mustache this time. That'll be later. But we got a feather blade in here, and we got it on six. There we go. I love using anything that has to do with the past or has like a long, rich history. I like supporting that sort of stuff. And, you know, I guess when Michael Knudsen passed away, it had been a family run operation. And I don't know what happens to companies like that. Maybe they, they go, they, whatever happens to them. And then they are able to be purchased and reborn by people that care. And from what I can tell this new father and son team, George and Christian, they know what they're doing because they sent me a sample pack and you can go, I'll, I'll put links below to their website and everything. And uh, they sent a sample pack of many different fragrances, a bunch of little ones in here. And I tried them all out and two of them I like. The other three weren't quite for me, but that's why they have so many. You can try it out, find the one you like. Oh, dang it. I, geez, I really just sliced myself. I went sideways to get neck because I've got this soul patch. And then the mustache part, and I just went sideways with it to get it, and I sliced myself. Not even a, a nick, like an actual slice. All right. Take care of that. Anyway, you can buy a sample pack of their... Oh, let me tell you. This shaving soap is the most expensive I've ever used. In Europe, it's $79, but in the U.S., and they have a, a European, because they're based out of Germany, I believe, uh, now... Uh, it's made in France. Uh, the actual oil for the perfumes are made in France uh, for the fragrances and stuff. But they're German-based. Yeah, I'm going to have to get the Allen block out and stop that thing. <laughs> as soon as I'm done with this one, I'll pause, get the Allen block out, because you don't want to see me holding my finger up here, and neither do I. But, uh, you know, the whole world of men's fragrances is just... A mystery to me because I know nothing about it. Because like I've said a million times, I've used Dracar Noir still and have since 1986. And, uh, you know, I tried Obsession during the 80s and some other stuff. But, uh, you know, once you get something you like and you stick with it, that's what I like to do. But there are guys out there that will have a huge cologne collection. And they'll use a different one every single day depending on their mood. So it's really fascinating to me when you meet someone that has... You know, an interest that you never even knew existed, and yet they know every minute detail about it. So, men's colognes are that kind of world to me. I don't know much about it, but it's fascinating when I get introduced to it. Okay, I'm going to uh, rinse off my face and put it into this little slice, and then we'll continue talking about this shave soap, Gravel. It's amazing what an alum block can do. That Since that was a slice, I had to hold this up here a bunch, and it's still kind of wanting to bleed. So, we're going to move ahead. Now, I did wash it off my face a bunch, because if you try to lather after you've done an Allen block, it'll break it down and it gets weird. All right, let's do the second pass. How are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feeling good. Now, I just washed my face a bunch of times because of the alum, so I can't tell you about the slickness. I'll tell you about the slickness, the residual slickness of this when we're done with the second pass. I'm going to get a little bit more out of here, because that did take me a while to get that thing to stop, and it still hasn't quite stopped. All right, so we're going back to the bowl. This stuff is meant for exclusive and niche style shops, you know, where you get the high end uh, men's fragrances, uh, uh, toiletries, whatever, however you want to say it. That's what this 
market is. So if you are like me, you're not probably not privy to this kind of stuff too much. And like I said earlier, it is nice to visit. And if you're in the mood for something, you know, a way to spoil yourself, or you need a good Christmas gift for someone, I mean, with the presentation box and this, you know, that I don't think you can go wrong with that. I think they also sell uh, brushes when I was looking on their website. Not sure. I think those. I think, I think though. <laughs> All right, let's do the second pass. And please pardon the little Nick. I'm going to go across the grain. This, uh, you know what I'm getting um, as I'm shaving with this? I'm getting a slight, like, clean, powdery smell. I'm getting a little bit of a, almost a smoky smell, which I think is the leather. That's one of the the, uh, the notes. Um, I, I, I have no idea what geranium and iris are supposed to smell like, but <laughs> they've got such a complex list of scent notes. Is that the correct term? I'm not even sure. I'm just a hayseed from Texas. What do I know? If it ain't got chili and cheese on top, I don't know where. I don't know where it's from. I'm only joking. <laughs> I hope you know. I hope you know. Got to keep myself entertained during these things, too. My gosh, I'm just standing here all by myself. Okay, going against the grain. Oh, man, this is such a good razor, too. You know, every now and then you should, if you have the means, and don't live beyond your means. Like, what I mean is, if you can... If you can help it, don't go into debt. Because I got into debt when I was in college and it took me many, 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 many years to get out. So young men watching, young women, whoever, don't live beyond your means if you can help it. Sometimes you gotta have a big expense. I know, cars and stuff like that, repairs, maybe health insurance or, I mean, uh, you know, healthcare. But uh, every now and then, if you can afford it, splurge a little bit, you know? Something like this, something you're not used to, something, like I said, if this is Neiman Marcus, if this is uh, Nordstrom's, whatever your high-end store is, I'm sure there's some I know nothing about, like in Beverly Hills, that'd be like, oh, Nord's, you think Nordstrom's is fancy? <laughs> then like Parasso or whatever else is like, you know, going to Kmart. And this is like, you really went to a nice place and it smelled good inside and they had comfortable chairs to sit in while you wait, you know? This is that kind of an experience. That's what I'm having right now. All right, let's wash off. Feel how we're feeling. See how we're doing. All right. Very soft and plump. Still feels some good slickness down here. That's good. That residual soapy uh, slickness. So you're, you know, you're just going to glide right over your face. It's taking, man. The combination of that and this razor, dang good combination. I'm sorry you guys can't try out this razor, but if you come to my house, uh, <laughs> don't come to my house. I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. Lathering up for the third one, the third pass. This really is a great brush too. I tried to pick some good stuff to shave with for this one, because I felt like this is such a nice product, you know? So anyway, yes, so the colognes, the gravel, uh, a man's cologne. So that's what it's called, a man's cologne. And it's like 175 bucks for a bottle, you know? And the funny thing is, Michael Knudsen, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing his last name too, Scandinavian or something. Uh, they would, they hand fill every bottle and they add gravel from the Hudson River in New York. Now, if you live in the New York area, you're probably like, what? And I'm kind of, I don't live there, but I'm like, what? I just hope they wash that gravel. But they've been doing that for years, I guess. That's their thing. So if you see a bottle of gravel cologne, it has a bunch of little pebbles in the bottom. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? No idea. I wonder how uh, Mr. Knudsen came up with that. And since this stuff is made like over in Germany and France, I believe now, I wonder if they import Hudson River pebbles. I'd love to know. Fascinating. All right, we're going. I'm going. I'm all over the place with this third pass. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just shaving, just to shave. I'm luxuriating. Oh, I think the nick is pretty much stopped. Thank goodness. Got a couple little nicks on my neck, but that's all right. I always get that with these vintage fat boys. They're always keeping me honest, you know. So let me show you with a little, like you can get a perfume sampler or a fragrance sampler, 29 bucks, try them out. It'll be filled. They'd sent me five of them. 
They sent me American Dream, Hudson River, New York, and 46th Street, which I wasn't keen on those. And then they sent me the, a man's cologne, which was good, but the one I love is called Across the Ocean. I'm not sure what it is about this, but Across the Ocean, man. And they even, look, they sent me some of these things that you see in the, in the uh, com uh, convenience stores, department stores, where you spritz it, and then you let the alcohol dry off a little. Let me, my hands are wet. There we go. Do that. Oh, there's like this, it's almost like sweet, fruity, almost a cotton candy. Mm, I can see myself wearing this. I like that. And I'm not a new cologne guy. I like to stick with what I got, but that one, I like. That one's good. And the man's cologne, it's a little more spicy, a little more old school. You can tell it's from a different era, you know? Fascinating. It's kind of like when I use Frank Sinatra's cologne from the 50s, you know? It's like, this is, if I had met Frank Sinatra in the 50s, was is this what he would have smelled like? And if I'd met some of, you know, some businessman in New York in 1959, would he have been wearing this gravel? If he was well off, he might have been. I don't know. But I love to think about that kind of stuff. You know, Elvis's cologne, you love Brute. Now that's what I would call like, like Elvis. <laughs> you know, Elvis and I are not alike, but we, our sensibilities, I think, are alike as far as, you know, garbage foods that we like to eat. And uh, we're used to, you know, low-end colognes that we still like, you know, like Brute or whatever. And then you've got the world of, like, the Knickerbocker Hotel in New York or, you know, the Four Seasons or whatever. Anyway, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to let you understand. I'm trying to get, put a spin on it that you can, that you get me. Hopefully I've done that. I'll tell you what else got me. This dang brand new feather blade got me. Woo! All right. Got a couple of problem areas. Let me wash off and we'll get to problem areas. And then, oh my goodness, I don't have an aftershave. Well, I'm going to use good old Cremo just because, just because. Get back to my roots, back to my, my Kmart. I've tasted the champagne and now I'm going back for the Schlitz. I wish I could afford, afford Schlitz champagne. Ooh, they're good. It stopped. All right. Yes. I will be using an alum block on my neck because of all these little nicks. So an alum block constricts your skin and can stop nicks, you know? Tightens up your skin after a shave. Do a tighten up. You should smell what my bathroom smells like right now. Normally that's not something I would say, but before this video I started spritzing all the colognes, you know, testing them out. As I always say, try on a cologne before you take a shower. That way if you hate it, you can just wash it off. So that's what I was doing, testing them all out. And man, it smells good in here. It smells like a, it smells like you're shopping at, at Joskies in 1978 down in Houston. And you're, you're with your mom and you go past the perfume and the men's fragrances counter. So it smells like in here. I like that. I like that. All right. So there's the Allen block on the neck. I'm going to let that sit for a second, make sure those nicks are taken care of. Otherwise I will look like a cheetah with little red spots all over. Um, yeah, so gravel. Christian and Georg Blessing, Christian and George Blessing, they resurrected it. They're selling it now. You can find it online. I'll put a link down below. This is the coolest. Look at this box. I mean, that's, that's luxurious, baby. You put that, if your dad opens this on Christmas morning or whatever gift, your birthday or whoever, it's going to like it. It's going to like it. Try it out. 49 bucks in the U.S. All right, here we go. And uh, the thing is, they make use tons of natural ingredients, like castorium from beavers. No, not Bucky's. Maybe like Bucky's. I don't know. Okay. Let's dry off. Let's wash off. Let's get our things. Get all of our ducks in a row. Ah. Hmm. I feel like this is such a fancy shave. I should put on a monocle and a top hat and a tuxedo after this. I wish I had a monocle. I've got a tuxedo. I don't have a top hat or a monocle. Dang it. Maybe I'll just go outside with just a top hat and a monocle. No. Terrible. Mr. Peanut's already got that. Okay. Cremo. Just a... I wish I had some uh, gravel aftershave. I wonder if they have aftershave. I'm not sure. 
Anyway, this is a a good scent, a good like kind of over. It's like an after dinner mint. That's what this stuff is like because it's minty, it's refreshing mint. So it's like having a nice Brock Starlight mint after dinner. Cremo. All right. So that's it. That is the gravel shaving soap. They're just now starting to sell it. it. Comes in this groovy stainless steel bowl, which you can use for any number of things if you want to. Comes in that great presentation box. And they've got a whole line of cologne and other stuff. Check down below. Thank you, Christian and George. Blessing. Thank you for, uh, for sending this to me, for reaching out to me. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Really interesting. I hope people uh, got some good info out of this. And if not, <laughs> that's my fault. That's my fault. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I will see you all very soon.